<laughs> Any that you like the most? Sorry? Best favorite topic, your best topic. Uh, my best topic um, was um, the beaches. Another was cuisines, customs, and traditions of India. Yeah, I liked it, the types of food which is there, the nice culture around the beach, and many others. Yes. You want to become a travel agent? Yes, I would like to be one if I get an opportunity. You like traveling? Yeah, I like traveling so much, yes. So how is everything in your country? It's going good? Sorry. Nigeria had Sorry. elections. You also have elections? No. No, we're having elections in the next three years to come, in 2026. It's only Nigeria we are having elections. Yes. And also demonetization in Nigeria. I can't tell because I'm not from Nigeria. But they're having what's the elections. In your country, what's going on? Uh, right now, there's nothing going on. It's only a Lent period, Lent period. Yeah, we're in a period of Lent and people are fasting and they're going through the 40 days. Let's wait for two, three minutes, then we will start. Hope everyone okay. will be joining. It's fine. So, Hamza, good afternoon. Mom, it is morning, Mom. <laughs> good morning. Here in Nigeria, it is morning. It is now 10.30. So how was your elections? Fine, ma'am. You voted? Am I audible? Yes, ma'am, you are audible. We can hear you. Okay. So uh, let us wait. Let others join. Any questions? Yes, ma'am, there is a concept I come across and uh, I need some clarification. Uh, 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 is there any similarity, uh, similarities or what are the differences between the word uh, tourist, tourism, I mean, tourism, visit, and excursion? So you want me to give you the difference between tourists? I'm using the chat box, visitor, and... Okay, what is the difference between a tourist and a visitor? First, let us understand. Who is a tourist? Who is a visitor?
tourist and visitor. What is the difference? Who is a tourist? Okay, now okay. I think you have okay. studied TS, TS1. Yes, ma'am. What is your definition of a tourist? See, please try to understand when you have a purpose of travel and you are away from your home environment, then you are a tourist. For example, you are in Nigeria and within Nigeria or within Uganda, you are traveling from one state to another with the purpose of leisure and travel. Then you are a tourist. But if you were changing your flight from Dubai, you are a visitor. So the difference between the tourist and the visitor is related with the purpose of travel. For example, I know Caesar, I know Bashir, and I come to Uganda and Nigeria only to meet them. I am not interested in any tourism activity. So I am a visitor. Though the government will issue me on the paper the visa, tourist visa only, but my objective is only to stay with the family of Bashir and Caesar, and I eat food, I stay with them, I don't do much of activity and go back to my country. So the purpose of tourist is recreation, leisure, entertainment, and going out of the hometown. If you are in your hometown and in your same town, you go and visit any tourism place, you are not a tourist. When you move from one country to another, one region to another, for the purpose of leisure and entertainment, then you are a tourist. And who is a visitor? Visitor has, for example, a business visitor. A business visitor is in the new city for 24 hours he attends his meeting he's known as a business traveler also he's not a tourist the company has sponsored his uh, trip he's supposed to go from one place to another for a business meeting and he conducts the meeting takes the flight and go back to his own country so he's a visitor so if you are coming to India for a business talk, you get, you reach Mumbai, you have a meeting in Mumbai. And after having the meeting in Mumbai, you go back to your hometown without looking at the beaches, without doing any shopping. So you are a business visitor to Mumbai, not a tourist to the Mumbai. An excursionist means like, for example, if you're going for a long voyage, for example, some people do cycling tour. They visit seven countries on cycle. Some of them do motor tours that they will have their own car and they will visit different, different countries through their car. Some may have a trip to six nations or five nations. So they are excursionists. They are not tourists because their purpose is to complete 1,000 miles, 5,000 miles, 10,000 miles on a bicycle or on a motorbike. Many people who are in your age group, they prefer to go on bike, motorcycle, and they do some adventure activities. So this is the difference. The purpose of tourism is tourists will spend money in your country. A visitor will come for official purposes to visit. 
and an excursionist will pass through your country because he's going to so many other countries also. So what you will get in the exam is you have to learn the definition of tourism. Who is a tourist? The tourist can be a domestic tourist. That means he is traveling within his country or the tourist can be an international or a global tourist traveling from one country to another. So this is a very important question, difference between a tourist and a visitor. Nice question you have raised. So now today in this class, today we have the last class of the subject. We have Sagir, Hamza, Caesar, and Bashir with us. Let's hope others also join. Now, how many of you want to become a travel agent? Do you want to become a travel agent? Yes, ma'am, I do. So now, Bashir and Caesar. Now I'll start with Caesar because I started the discussion with him only. So Caesar, to become a travel agent in your country, what are the essential conditions? How can I become a travel agent? How can I become a travel agent? So it is not like this that you are studying a BTS program and you suddenly become a travel agent. This is not possible. So how to become a travel agent? What is the job of a travel agent? What is a travel yes. agent? Uh, in Uganda. Yes. yes. In Uganda, for you to be a travel agent, you need a tour operator's license. Very good. You need a license for you to be a travel agent. Yes. Okay, Bashir, you want to become a travel agent? What is the job of a travel agent? What is the job of a travel agent? What is he supposed to do? Yes, I do really want to become a travel agent since I received a literacy of tourism. So, for a person to become a travel agent, uh, there are different procedures you're supposed to follow in order to establish a tourism business in Nigeria. First of all, I know you're supposed to receive a license. Someone should agree with you to read your. Uh, how you arrange your business and you, you uh, rent a place and uh, you will uh, propose different documents that will make you uh, eligible travel agents so that whenever the complaint is arrived from your client, you know where they are going to meet you and uh, handle the problem of the tourism and other activities related to it. Uh, for a man to become a travel agent must to be trustworthy sometimes. So uh, must to know the literacy of tourism before you actually become a tourist, tourist agent. That's, uh, that's why I say I want to be a travel agent because uh, the literacy of tourism. Okay, thank you so much. Now, first of all, let us understand what is the job of a travel agent? What is travel agent supposed to do? Just give me one minute. Oh, hey, my name is Kevin. My job requires me to travel quite a bit, but I love visiting far off beaches as well. 
I have to interact with travel agencies all the time to make and change. Oh, hey, my name is Kevin. My job requires me to travel quite a bit, but I love visiting far off beaches as well. I have to interact with travel agencies all the time to make and change my travel plans. Without travel agencies, it would be really difficult for me to travel. By knowing more about travel agencies and their role in the travel industry, you can be better equipped to serve travelers. In this video, I will discuss three major travel agencies corporate, leisure, and online. Oh, it's Greg. Greg is my corporate travel agent. We usually chat over the phone. At my company, I travel every few weeks to Europe and Asia to meet important clients and Greg books my travel. My company has particular rules about what types of airfare, airlines, hotels, and cars that Greg can book for me. These are usually called corporate travel policies. Although my company has policies for these things, there are personal preferences that I can request. Greg takes my requests and finds the best deal for our company while also helping me get the things I want, like a window seat for the long flights. My clients often change their plans depending on their business needs. So anytime I need to change flights or hotels, I can always depend on Greg to help me make any last minute changes. Oh, that reminds me, I need to book my hotel for my Brazil getaway. I'll call you back, Greg. Thanks for your help. Lisa is my leisure travel agent. I always love to travel to South America during the winter, and Lisa has been my South American travel expert since I first started traveling. Lisa is always on top of my travel needs. She checks, double checks, and always gives me a heads up if there's anything missing or that we need to change. She's also gotten me out of a few tough situations when my flights were canceled or if the hotel I stayed at didn't meet my expectations. Hey Lisa, when you get a chance, could you send me some hotel options for my Brazil trip? Ah, here's my son Chris. Chris has a few college friends throughout the US. He loves to go visit them a couple times a year. Chris usually uses an online travel agency. Expedia, Travelocity, Kayak, Orbitz, and Priceline are all online travel agencies and are usually referred to as the Big Five. Online travel agencies function very similar to corporate or leisure travel agencies, but are mostly automated. Many people like Chris use them to book shorter flights, but they can be used to book international flights, hotels, rental cars, cruises, and much more. Oh, I forgot, I need to call a client back now. But before I do, let's recap the three types of travel agencies that we've covered. Greg is my corporate travel agent who works with my company to book my business travel needs. Lisa is my leisure travel agent that gives me expert advice and books my vacations. Online travel agencies can also be used for both of these things, but are mostly automated. All three have their place in the travel industry. No. We have in our syllabus one such travel agency, and the name of the travel agency is SITA Sita Travel Agency. So you have just watched a video that what is the function of a travel agency? What is a travel agency supposed to do? What are they supposed to do? What is the job of a travel agent? Well, travel agents will help his client to have a nice uh, accommodation, nice hotel, and uh, and they know how to you know get his client and a passport and uh, make some courses, get visa for his client and uh, suggest him to make all all the necessary things that he will have to do in order to guarantee that uh, he's traveling. So he will help him in getting visa, passports, and uh, even booked him the hotel 
you have to you will reach when you reach the destination and uh, other things related to this. This is some uh, some of the work of travel agent, right? Very good, correct. It's you will get full marks. <laughs> you will score very good marks in your exam. <laughs> So, <laughs> the Sita Travel Agency is like very old, 1933. And then it was first opened in London. First overseas office was opened in 1955. And it has grown over a period of time. Now, what you have to write in your answer is if you get a question on Sita Travel Agency, you have to write down about the important functions of the travel agency, which Bashir has very rightly discussed. And today the name of Sita is changed. I will share with you the actual video of uh, Sita travel agency that will give you, it is known as CUNY travel agency now. So what is the job of a CUNY travel agency? We will just watch and try to understand uh, its importance of, in today's perspective. So the important activities that are performed by Sita or CUNY travel agency today are presented in this video. Have a look at it. It is very easy for you to relate. It is not at all tough.
This is uh, the travel agency with 50 years of travel experience. You can imagine 50 years of delivering perfect moment is the travel agency Sita. Now, they have focused in their promotional ad that they cater to all age groups, young people, English, foreign travelers, families, adventure, religion, culture. So as you have watched in the video that there are three ways you can run your business. You can run your business through a leisure travel agency. For example, we just watched the video of Sita. You can also run your business for corporates. If the business between India and Nigeria, India and Uganda is increasing, then you can have your travel agency only for corporate travelers. You will do hotel reservation, airlines reservations and everything for them. And the third one is that if you are having a lot of uh, space issues, you don't want to give heavy rent. In such a situation, you should go for an online travel agency. So any good travel agency in your country are you aware about any travel agency in your country? Okay, I will not take much of time, but I will just give you an idea about the travel agency in Africa so that when you are writing the answer, it will become more interesting for you. That is what is my objective. Just a second, give me one minute. I'm going to show I'm going to show you an in I'm going to show you an interview of a person who has made money by doing business between India and Africa. How he has done it? I will just show you for a few minutes. Rest of the video you can watch also on your own. India and doing business. So my name 
Uh, it's Nito Maluka. My grandmother was Portuguese, so Nito is a Portuguese name meaning grandson. Uh, the owner of Mobella Experience, Stores and Safaris. I am born and grew up in the township called Kanyamazane in South Africa. I know a lot of Indians will be asking themselves, where is that? But it's a township, uh, that's where I grew up and that's where I started the business, um, at the Mobella Experience as a tour operator. He came, he saw, and he conquered. This is the surprising story of a small town boy from South Africa who has made it big in India. Meet Neto Maluka, founder of Bombella Experience, a small tour operator in Pumalanga province of South Africa, which has been generously endowed by Mother Nature. Until March, Neto and India were totally unknown to each other. That was when Neto first set his foot in India to participate in a roadshow organized by South Africa, its first in the post-pandemic era. Over the past two months, Neto has been flooded with business from India and says he is fully booked for the rest of the year, even as tourism from India to South Africa is just about picking up. Here is his story. There are so many possibilities out there. You must just go and uh, get them, you know, and told me that not all closed docks, doors are locked but some doors are closed for air conditioning purposes. So I kept knocking and doors kept opening. You know, I just wait and walk my way through. Neto says that before discovering India, he was focused on business from Europe and United States. And you know, my focus was always at the other nationalities like the uh, Americans, the Europeans, and also getting that um, small families that will be traveling to Pumalanga and I will show them the township, show them the beautiful piece of paradise that we have there in Pumalanga like the panorama and the Kruger National Park, the Sudwala Caves and lots of interesting uh, places to mention. But it was India that propelled him into limelight, especially because the way he was able to connect with the Indian travel trade and the speed with which he has won business from many travel agents, despite being a small agent from a relatively unknown part of South Africa. In March this year, I got an opportunity to come to the roadshow. No, it was just a blow on my face, something that I've never seen before. And I never thought that I would get such a big volume from an Indian market. You know, as a first time, a person coming to India to market my product and it was a surprise to me the turnout that I got from lots of DMCs in India which I am not going to mention and I would like to thank them from the bottom of my heart so it's been a really so I have shared with you you can watch the entire video that you all can open up your own travel agencies you can work in the travel business. You can join together as partners with your friends and you can start a travel agency. So in our course, we had Sita Travel Agency, but I have shown you a video that you can start your travel agency through a corporate mode or an online mode. As mentioned uh, by your batchmate, you need a license. License is very easy process. It is not tough because government wants more and more travel agencies. So when more and more travel agencies are required in such a situation, uh, you have a lot of scope to do your own business. How many of you would like to launch a business and would you like to go through an online travel agency or an office based travel agency? What would you like to do? Yes, please. You would like an online travel agency or you would like physical travel agency? Well, I think uh, uh, physical travel agency would be better to the people 
than the online travel agency because there is a, a number of hackers. The hackers will always open, you know, the page or counter page uh, page of agency. So when uh, when you complete submitting your application or your bio data online, so at the end you will realize it was a page page of travel agency. So you don't know no one that you could uh, raise your complaint. But if it is physical, any problem that arrives from uh, the process of your traveling, you can directly contact the travel agent and uh, give your complaint to him. So to me, I prefer physical travel agency actually. I can give all my data online to someone because I can't guarantee that, you know, but if I know your office, I can directly contact you. That's my opinion. Right? So. Very good, very good, right. When we have a corporate office, and if we are able to get a good office connection, someone picks up our phone, if we have a problem while traveling, if there is somebody to assist us, then we trust the travel agency more. So in this topic, uh, which is related with travel agency, I think uh, you can just go through any of the website of Sita and from there you can read a little bit about uh, what is this online travel agency and uh, it is not, you can relate it with any travel agency operations. So this was all about uh, the travel agency Sita. Now I move to the next topic. And the next topic is very, very important from your exam point of view. Okay, have you heard about this uh, word Air India? Have you ever heard about Air India? Okay, uh, name any one airlines of your country. What is the name of your airport? Caesar, what is the name of the airport in your city or Bashir? Yes, there's uh, air, there is one airport, big airport in Nigeria. Oh, I think at the same it is the airport that we have. There is uh, a Nikano International Airport. There is Nimadi Azikwe in the capital city. International Airport. I think that was the Very two main big airport that we have. Uh, so, Air India is an airlines. Can you name few airlines? Can you name few airlines? Yes, there is Cabo Air. There is Cabo Air. Uh, I think it's the only one I, to, I can remember now, so I forgot the rest. Okay. Uh, now, how many well, airlines are there in your country? How many airlines are there in your country? Any idea? I know two airlines in my country. There is IRS. Uh, Acronym is uh, IRS, which is Isiaka Rajivi Airline. There is Kabu Airline. There is Irano Airline. There is uh, Asman Airline. There is uh, that's it's all, it's all, okay. It's open. It's not the country airline. I can't mention it. So those the four that I mentioned is the uh, airline within the country. So, are you aware about any airlines of India other than Air India? What is the aviation market of the world? Have you ever, ever analyzed how airlines uh, work? What is the aviation market all about? Yes, there is a uh, uh, local, local. Uh, 
local uh, airline and uh, international one. So, uh, private they operate within the country and uh, rest operate the tour internationally. Uh, okay, I will uh, sh I will share with you a video why airlines is increasing their operations in India. Why India is becoming so popular. Especially North American ones are expanding their routes to India. After the pandemic, airlines like Air Canada, American, United and Air India have all announced new routes connecting North America to major Indian cities. Though it's not only North America where new routes are being introduced, but nearly all over the world. While some airlines have added on existing routes, others have introduced new ones. The number of new routes is way too much, but here are some important ones. Toronto Mumbai, via London, Sydney Bengaluru, San Francisco Bengaluru, Mumbai JFK, Bangkok Kolkata, and others. Out of these, some have been implemented and others will be implemented in coming months. But that's not it. The UAE is asking the Indian government to add another 50,000 seats a week between the two countries, allowing for a greater presence of Dubai-based carriers in India. Dubai has shown a keen interest to serve other secondary cities in India where the airport's authority has recently upgraded to international standards. And not just Dubai is showing keen interest in Indian secondary cities and overall India, but also Vietnam Airline. Vejet has also launched two new routes to one of these cities with a few other in Mumbai and Delhi. But this quest for more flights doesn't end with just these two. Canada also happens to be extremely interested in Indian aviation. Recently the two countries announced an open skies agreement, greatly expanding flight rights between the two countries. Airlines of India and Canada will now be able to operate unlimited flights between key cities such as Delhi, Mumbai, Bangalore, Toronto, Montreal, and Vancouver, ending the cap of 35 weekly flights. So now let's get into the main question. What is it in India that's making airlines from all over the world fly here, and why now? As more and more people are getting accessibility and affordability to air travel, the number of passengers in Indian aviation is increasing every day. Low-cost carriers and more airports in secondary cities have led to more people traveling through flights and have unlocked a new market for Indian aviation. Now, India is not the biggest aviation market yet, but it is surely providing some big numbers of passengers for airlines to thrive on. As of now, Indian aviation is still recovering from the pandemic, just like other countries, and will probably hit previous numbers in the coming one or two months. Although India is still miles behind China and America, it is growing at a faster pace than both of them. Earlier this year, Boeing predicted that India will be the fastest-growing aviation market with 7% annual growth until 2040. For comparison, the growth for the Southeast Asia market is pegged at 5.5%, China at 5.4%, Africa at 5.4% too, and finally, the US at 4.7%. In September 2022, Passengers carried by domestic airlines in India was 20 million compared to 13 million in the previous year, thereby registering a growth of 49%. This seems like a really massive growth, but it is mostly supported by the ending of the pandemic. However, a 49% increase is seen rarely. Right now the growth is mostly supported by leisure traveling, with business travel yet to catch up to pre-pandemic levels. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has also described the number of daily domestic air passengers nearing the pre-pandemic level as a great sign and said the focus is on improving connectivity across India. With this speed, the Indian aviation sector is expected to touch 400 million passengers annually in just 7 to 10 years. Surprisingly, even freight traffic has seen a 2.5% increase between 2016 and 2022. It is believed that by 2040, 
airports in India will be able to manage 17 million metric tons of freight, currently, it is at 3 million. As demand for more flights progressively increases, India is aware of the infrastructure requirements to support such growth. To further grow and be able to cater to the increasing air traffic, the Indian government has been taking measures to increase the number of its operational airports. So, our topic of discussion is Air India. Air India is one of the oldest airlines in India. And today, this airline is expanding in its fleet capacity. It's expanding in terms of uh, the number of passengers. Air India is also there on new routes as far as Indian aviation is concerned. So have you ever heard about Air India? No one has heard about Air India? Okay. So I will give you some pointers uh, regarding Air India. So Air India was a national airlines of this country. And it was established long back in 1946. So when uh, India had earned its independence, at that time only this uh, airlines was launched. And prior to independence, uh, India attained independence in 1947. So in 1948, we had this airlines. And this airlines is... Uh, has an operations department which every airlines will have an engineering department commercial department hr department stores and tourism division so these are some of the divisions of the airlines that uh, we have as far as india is concerned then uh, this is an old data but it caters to all important continents. It caters to North America, India, Europe, Southeast Asia, Middle East Asia, Africa. And recently, Air India has given a big order for purchase of Boeings from uh, America and also uh, specialized aircrafts from France. So Air India is one of the airlines in India. It has a very good timetable. Uh, the passengers are very happy. It is regular in its operations. Its productivity is high. And it's uh, flying on major routes like India, India, Europe, Southeast Asia. So this is all about Air India. So you can read a little bit about Air India. And in your country, uh, do you have any such airlines which is an old airlines? Do you have any such airlines? Have you ever studied about airlines? Where are your batchmates? Where have they lost? They're gone, Caesar and all. You have a WhatsApp group? Tell them to join you, the class. Yes, please. Yes. Uh, you like any airlines? Have you ever traveled by ro by airways? Have you ever watched any video? Oh, yes. Well, I have never traveled on, uh, in air, actually. All my travel is by car. <laughs> That's why I don't have a experience so, about to India, come by air. You have to come by air only to India, isn't it? Okay, so this is what is aviation. But I think you must have watched the aircraft from a distance. Have you watched the aircraft from a distance? Uh, aircrafts, uh, you like air, air travel?
Yes, we like air travel because it is more safety than by car and other mode of transport. Okay, in India, we have two airlines which are very, very important. One is Air India and second is Indigo. So, uh, shall I continue sharing the video? You are comfortable if I share the video? It makes more sense. Yes, Pashi. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Just give me. Okay. Yes, give me one minute because I have to remove the ads. behind a trail of delays and cancellations. But the country's largest airline, Indigo, is known to pull off the difficult feat. In 10 of the 12 months last year, Indigo had the best on-time performance of any scheduled domestic airline at four metro airports, namely Bengaluru, Hyderabad, Delhi and Mumbai. In the months of April and November 2021, the two months where Indigo was not leading that year, it was still trailing at second and third positions. Being on time is one of Indigo's three main focus areas, the other two being low fares and delivering a hassle-free experience. But this year, it was on the top in only two of the first nine months of the year. On the other hand, Air India, which was previously faring poorly in this metric, has consistently ranked above Indigo in July, August and September consecutively. Air Asia India and full-service carrier Vistara the other Tata Group-owned airlines have been topping the table in these three months. A data analytics-driven app developed by TCS is helping AirAsia India improve its punctuality score. It topped on-time performance among major airlines for five consecutive months since April. As per the latest data available from DGCA, in September, Vistara emerged as India's top on-time airline, recording an OTP rate of 91%. It was followed by AirAsia India at 89.8%, and Air India at 87.1%. At fourth was Indigo, with 84.1% of its flights being on time. Compare this with April, when Air India's OTP at four metro airports was 81.8%, putting it at the sixth spot. While 90.1% of Indigo's flights flew on time in April, this fell to 80.8% in July, amid an unrest by some of its cabin crew and technicians over salaries. This is also when Air India started to steal a march over Indigo. The Tata Group reportedly identified on-time performance as a primary improvement goal at Air India since its acquisition toward the end of January. The Tata's roped-in Singapore Airlines Group veteran Campbell Wilson, who took over as the airline's CEO in June to lead its turnaround plan time which is there uh, of the duration of flight on your ticket is usually door closed to door open. So that, that's your commercial block time, which is defined. And the actual block time for operations is your chocks on and chocks off. Now, it's very important that your door closed time and your chocks off time are as minimal as possible for you to be efficient as an airline. It's how fast can you board your total book load for that flight and make sure everybody's boarded, seated, the cargo's loaded, the doors are closed right at the time, which is your door close of the time that's published on your ticket. Now, many times we have seen that an aircraft might land in a destination airport before our published arrival time. Now that is obviously on account of several factors. Uh, you know, if you take a delay on, uh, on departure, then the pilot can obviously fly a bit more faster. Or you just get blessed with a gorgeous 50 to 70 knot tailwind. Everything boils down to building efficiency and improving efficiency cyclically. So it's not a software. It's the way you function as a process. Your, your terminal operations is a system. Your ground crew is a system. Every, all of those systems need to function like main gears in a big gearbox. Air India has reportedly set up a cross-functional team to comprehensively assess the upcoming flight schedule for the winter season. CEO Campbell Wilson said Air India has invested in IT systems to improve the capability of aircraft predictive maintenance and wants to ensure the right systems are in place to monitor the turnaround times of aircraft. Spooked by Air India's recent rise, Indigo has asked its cabin crew to make some drastic changes in flight management to improve performance. One of the instructions is to close the cabin door within 60 seconds of the last passenger entering the plane, although the passenger may still be in the process of settling down in the cabin. Further, the company has asked the pilots to reach the airports at least 75 minutes before the scheduled departures of their flights. They must be seated inside the plane 35 minutes before departure. Indigo has also increased the pace of hiring ground staff that was laid off during the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, Air India, as we know, had 
tremendous lot of problems with their airport terminal operations because of AI sats and uh, there were a lot of steps that they had to take to really get the Air India SATS airport handling team to improve their efficiency. And a lot of those issues which with Air India that was pretty common was last minute change of gates. They've, Air India has actually sorted that out and built efficiencies. Managing OTP for an airline like Indigo is far more complex. Indigo is a low cost carrier. Their turnaround time is half of, a, of an Air India. So, which means in 30 minutes, they got, to, they got to get the aircraft cleaned, fueled to load the cargo and, and baggage and luggage, load passengers and close. So, when you're running an LCC, your OTP might fall a few notches because, you know, an Air India looks at a turnaround time of 45 minutes to one hour. An Indigo is 300 aircraft plus. So, so I'd probably say an Indigo at fourth is as good as an Air India at first with a, with a 45 to one hour minute turnaround time. I, would, I really wouldn't want to bring Vistara also into the bracket because one is they're ridiculously small and you have an air issue which is even more smaller in terms of quantum and operations for them to be... In conjunction with security personnel can ensure better management of crowds and minimize the time it takes to check in. For example, higher capacity and faster clearance at immigration counters could increase efficiency at the terminal side. This will complement the efforts of airlines to improve their on-time performance. Uh, so, in airlines, uh, it is not only aircraft, cabin, crew, your staff, your terminal, boarding on time, takeoff of the airport, uh, aircraft, no technical problem should be there, passenger safety, emergency landing in case if you find that the aircraft uh, is having some technical problem and good food inside the airlines because if you are traveling from your home country to India and the flight is of 10 hours duration then you will feel hungry you want something to eat uh, you may have some preferences for eating the food also. So all these are important points in the airlines operation. Airlines which is on time, which has got good staff, staff can speak different languages, not only English, but they can speak other languages. Uh, for example, the prominent languages of Africa, Staff can assist old people, handicapped people, blind uh, travelers, and staff can also take care of the emergencies in case of some adverse weather conditions. So airlines performance is based on the technical aspect of the aircraft, the time schedule of the aircraft, the type of uh, uh, people who are traveling, the travel duration, as well as it is also related uh, with the understanding of the passenger requirements. So we have Konami, uh, welcome to the class. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. So, which airlines you used while traveling from Nigeria to India? Yes, ma'am. I I just came in uh, to give my excuse, ma'am. Actually, I am not feeling fine. So, okay. that's why I did not join on time. Okay. I'm sorry, ma'am. No issues. Are you going to continue or you will leave the course? You will leave the class? Okay, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You were with us? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I, I, I will leave the class, ma'am. Okay. So, I have which tra airlines, when you traveled to India, which airlines you used? Ethiopian airline, ma'am. Ethiopian airlines. Have you heard about Air India? How, how long was the duration of your flight? Yes, uh, there is transit. 
from Nigeria yeah. to Addis Ababa, six mm. hours, and to India, six and uh, six plus hours. How was the food? Yes, ma'am. The food uh, from India to Addis Ababa, as you are coming back or going, uh, will be option, non-veg, and veg. And also, it's very nice. Um, uh, there's like beef, chicken, and other uh, dumplings. Very good. Thank you for your feedback. So what we were studying was we were studying about Air India. As you know that Air India Thank is you, one of the uh, most uh, prominent airlines in India. So every airlines operates like Air India only. Like there is some operations department we have, engineering department we have, commercial department, HR department, store and purchase department. So we were watching a video that how airlines operates timing is very important areas of operations are very important commercial agreements between airlines is also important because of fuel and other things then regulation is of course by the international authorities only and uh, they are also involved in some kind of a creating awareness interest about india participation in international trade shows, launching new aircraft. So Air India is one of the most uh, last week only. The gov There is a major uh, announcement about Air India that they are going to acquire new planes and they will uh, have, uh, uh, you know, new aircraft from France and United States. So this is all about Air India. You can talk about uh, Air India. You can write about Air India. I hope it is. Uh, you can relate with Air India. Yes. Uh, Bashir, <laughs> you are the only one with us. And Harina, yes. Yes, ma'am. The only one. I don't know what is going on today. The class they member. Are tired today. They are tired after the election. <laughs> yeah. Yes, the election is taking place in Nigeria. So most of the people are expecting to hear the results. I think that is what kept them busy from joining the class. <laughs> Also uh, served as an electoral agent uh, last two days, but I was able to do all the things that I will have to do in the polling station because of the lecture that I'm going to do. That's why. But maybe some people, you know, because we are from different uh, town. Some of the people. The town maybe the like the election are yet to finish, but our town uh, election is already done. That's why, that's why maybe some of them might not join the class at the time or even absent today. Okay, Aisha. So I will complete two more uh, chapters, and then our course will get over. So I will take up that chapter. Okay, this is a chapter. Hmm. Do you have a big highway in your country? Do you have a big highway? Do you have a highway? Yes, we have. Which one? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, from uh, yes, from our from the commercial city of Nigeria to capital city of Nigeria. And uh, this, that are the highway that we have. Even if you want to travel to outside the country, is the way that you can follow. That's the main highway.
now uh, i i will show you a 2 minute video and you have to explain me about this highway Infrastructure development is a key driver for progress across the African continent and a critical enabler for productivity and sustainable economic growth. It contributes significantly to human development, poverty reduction, and the attainment of Millennium Development Goals. Investment in infrastructure accounts for half of the recent improvement in economic growth in Africa and has potentials to achieve even more. For Africa, the need for adequate infrastructure, secure energy, efficient transport, reliable communication system, resilient sanitation, and affordable housing is particularly apparent. Africa's vast infrastructure deficit is a constraint on its growth, but also an opportunity to leapfrog to new, more efficient technologies. The Lagos Abidjan Highway is a main instrument or infrastructure that will ensure the development of the West African region and consolidate the economic resilience of West Africa. It is also an integral part of the African Union. The Abidjan-Lagos Highway forms part of the Dakar-Abidjan-Lagos cross-border coastline that will have a direct impact on 14 of the 16 West African countries. They are Benin, Burkina Faso, Côte d'Ivoire, Gambia, Ghana, Guinea, Guinea-Bissau, Liberia, Mali, Niger, Nigeria, Senegal, Sierra Leone, and Togo. The Lagos Abidjan Highway is also one of the 16 projects included in the Priority Action Plan of the EU's Program for Infrastructure Development in Africa, which is being implemented by the African Development Bank. The project is also a priority within the framework of the new ECOWAS Vision 2050, which, among other objectives, aims to make ECOWAS a fully integrated and interconnected economic region. Furthermore, the Lagos Abidjan Highway will complete the Enugu Bamenda Corridor linking southeastern Nigeria in West Africa to southwest Cameroon in Central Africa. The 443 kilometers highway coasting about $430 million is being financed by the African Development Bank and the project is currently being finalized. This integrating corridor will link the most economically dynamic cities and ports and the most densely populated agglomerations in West Africa, which is Lagos, Abidjan, Accra, Cotonou, and Lomé. It will also increase trade and integration in West Africa, notably by providing maritime port access to landlocked countries like Burkina Faso, Mali, Niger, and Chad, through its connection with other corridors along the north-south axis. The Lagos Abidjan Highway will boost transport routes, railroads, ports, and airports in West Africa. It will also help accelerate the implementation of the African Continental Free Trade Area, a market of 1.3 billion consumers and a combined gross domestic product of about $3 trillion. Three sections are planned for construction of the dual three-lane highway. The Abidjan in Côte d'Ivoire to Takoradi in Ghana, which is 295 kilometers. Takoradi in Ghana to Akanu, in Ghana also 466 kilometers and Noipe in Togo to Cotonou and Lagos in Nigeria which has a combined length of 320 kilometers. According to sources, the AFDB has actually provided 22.4 million euros in funding to finance the preparatory studies for the implementation and management of the corridor projects. The construction of the 1,081 km Abidjan Lagos Highway is expected to have a significant impact on the economies of the five West African countries along the line. The project is valued at $15.6 billion and led by the Economic Commission of West African States, ECOWAS. Primarily, the 1,028 km 6 lane homogeneous highway from Abidjan to Lagos is a major transport infrastructure project for West Africa. 
the economic Co commission ensured the implementation of the technical studies and related activities this large-scale engineering studies coupled with the development of a construction strategy and motorway operating procedures through the private public partnership are complex services to handle by contracting authorities and involve significant budgets furthermore three design and engineering firms so have you what have you ever traveled on this highway what is the benefit of this kind of a highway what is the advantage How many countries? Five countries will benefit. How will they benefit? With highway tourism. Lot of people will travel from one country to another. Second, goods, trucks. Trucks will travel from one point to another. Third, tourism will grow. Isn't it? Do you agree that highway is good for the country? Well, it, is good. it is good uh, because the exportation and importation will increase and uh, the trucks will be coming with a bulky of goods from one town or one country to another. If the highway is not very good, so this is not possible. It is hardly to be done. But with the help of uh, building bridges, highway, uh, such things will uh, will increase, and they will also help the boost of the economic of uh, one country and to another country. Yes. So I think it is not tough. If you have to write about highway, you can give the example of your own highway and tell us that it highways promote international understanding. Uh, highways travel, uh, makes the travel easy from one nation to another. Highways promote tourism. They promote easy handling of the cargo and other uh, goods and services. Is it easy? Can you relate with highway tourism now? You can write yes, about highway tourism. Yes, okay. Yes, I can so give an idea about, about highway. highway. Yes. Okay, so this is done. Now one last topic is left. I will not take much of your time. And this is about heritage. This is the last topic of your syllabus, your course. So, uh, just a minute, let me. So, this is a uh, last topic, last chapter of your course, the heritage hotels. So, in every country, uh, we have some old buildings those old building buildings are known as heritage hotels do do you have hotels who are situated in old buildings in your country do you have any hotel Okay, so uh, I assume that both of you are there in the class. So what you have to learn for this topic is very, very... Uh, Marshall has left the meeting. Okay, Haruna, are you there? Can I have a feedback from you? Any response from your side? Okay, I stop here. I wait for the response from your side. 
if there is only any response then i will proceed okay you had elections in your country any any feedback from your side yes ma'am uh, yeah, yes uh, it was day before yesterday on saturday we had an election uh, for presidential okay. election senate and uh, representative so it is yet uh, counting the result will be uh will be coming maybe today or tomorrow okay so i will just share with you one concept this concept is uh, related with heritage hotels okay thank you for joining again uh, bashir and uh, konami heritage hotels so heritage hotels means old buildings old palaces converted into hotel do you have such concept in your country also okay give me one minute Africa is a top travel destination in the world, having many accommodation options from five-star hotels, budget hotels, campsites, lodges, to even bed and breakfasts. Welcome to Tunacheki, and in this video, Tunacheki presents the most beautiful hotels found in Africa. Remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell and find information on how you can support the channel on PayPal or Patreon in the descriptions below. Number 10, the Corinthia Hotel in Sudan. This Festa Hotel in Khartoum is located on the meeting point of the Blue and White Nile and is situated right in the center of the commercial, business and administrative district of the city. Number 9, Fairmont Mount Kenya Safari Club in Kenya. With magnificent views of the majestic Mount Kenya, this resort has over 100 acres of landscaped gardens that offer a unique blend of comfort, relaxation and safari and has won the World's Travel's Choice Award several times. Number 8. Lux Belemare in Mauritius This stylish contemporary luxury hotel is tucked away in a beautiful island landscape tropics of Belemare. This modern Mauritius boutique resort lives on the glorious stretch of the Indian Ocean. Number 7. The Oyster Box in South Africa. This award-winning five-star luxury boutique hotel and spa located in Durban is a member of the world's leading hotels. It is known for its spa and outdoor pools which have views of the Indian Ocean. Number 6. The Constance Sabarajina in Madagascar. Set on a private island off the coast of Madagascar, this five-star resort is as laid back as you can guess, with no TVs, no phones and no worries and is among the best islands lodges in the world. Number 5. Rio Tureg Hotel in Cape Verde. This upscale, all-inclusive resort hotel on Boa Vista Island has a wealth of restaurants and bars. 
five swimming pools and a great spa facility. Basically, everything you could need for a luxury retreat. Number four, Palais Namaska Hotel in Morocco. Surrounded by the desert, this lavish resort is decorated with Moorish arches. The hotel offers a range of rooms, suits, villas, and palaces, and are all equipped with the latest technologies. Number three, the Nile Ritz Carlton in Egypt. This five-star luxury hotel situated opposite the River Nile offers elegant rooms with fine linen and marble bathrooms and features balconies with the city and river view giving you a pharaoh's point of view of Cairo. Number two, Saul's Palace in Tunisia. This five-star luxury hotel located in the heart of Old Town Souls, the Pearl of the Sahel, has direct access to the beach and offers a total of 250 exquisitely decorated rooms which combine design and comfort. Number one, and the title goes to the Sun City Resort in South Africa. This luxury resort and casino offers guests a luxurious accommodation characterized by its unique architecture and its beautiful gardens filled with waterfalls. The hotel is adorned with amazing sights and is simply out of this world. Thank you for watching and make sure to subscribe to get the latest. So our friend Bashir is facing some technical problem. So these are some of the top hotels of uh, the, your country and your region. In India, we have old palaces, old havelis, as well as buildings which are converted into hotels. And when the guests get into those hotels, they have a luxury experience there. So these heritage hotels. So it started with English people. In 1957, the Rambak Palace Hotel was opened. And then in Rambak Palace Hotel came under the management of Taj Group of Hotels. And then there were certain more hotels in Udaipur also, which became very much popular among the tourists because Udaipur is known as City of Lakes in India. So there were a lot of uh, hotels, a lot of old buildings near the lake, so the government wanted uh, to renovate those buildings. So the government launched a scheme and the scheme was related with uh, the tax exemptions, the depreciation, foreign exchange, and they were classified, classified as heritage hotels. So they were old buildings. They were uh, basically reformed, a lot of... Uh, Changes were done to make them suitable for the travelers. Facilities and services, etc., were offered. And then there was uh, a, a heritage, there's a heritage uh, hotels association. They guide and assist the fort, castle, and pa palace, traditional houses of architectural uh, importance to help them to develop a hotel in this regard. And they provide guidance, uh, they give assistance, and they get approvals from the Ministry of Tourism. They take care of the various problems which are faced by the heritage hoteliers, and they develop heritage tourism in the area. So this is what is uh, the concept of uh, heritage hotels. Like if you have some old buildings in your city, and if I want to come and... Uh, experience your city probably heritage can help me in a big way so is there any possibility in your country of developing heritage hotels do you think there is any possibility yes ma'am uh, i check on uh, on the google and i found some heritage hotels in lagos state and okay. in Jalingo, yes. So at least I, I found five of them. 
So you can quote the examples from your own country and tell us in the answer that this is how heritage tourism can develop. And this is another very good form of tourism for the conservation of the culture and the old buildings of the area. So this was the last topic. Now, uh, from my side, I have discussed all the 31 topics uh, which are listed in your course. And I have discussed them in sequence according to your LMS. Now, your feedback, any topic you want me to revise, anything from your side, general questions, if you have any, you can ask. It's clear, Noura, where were you? So any any point you want me to revisit or we can revise? Okay, those who have joined late, Konami and uh, Noura, I had discussed about aviation. Uh, have you read about aviation in your own country? No, oh, ma'am. No, you. What is the status of airlines in your country? Do you have good airlines? Yes, ma'am. We have, but uh, uh, mostly, mostly uh, we we are using domestic ones, uh, which are all commercial. But uh, for our own country, uh, very less. But before, before then, uh, very long before, mm -hmm. we have such kind of uh, aeroplanes uh, which uh, becoming internationally traveling. Yes, but now they are very scarce actually. Okay, now as far as airlines is concerned, uh, Air India is our topic as far as aviation is concerned. I have already shared. Uh, with those who were in the class uh, see today we had studied four topics the first topic was related with travel agency operations we studied that there are four types of travel agencies we can have uh, a leisure based travel agency we can have second a corporate travel agency and online travel agency and also specialized travel agencies you can have leisure-based travel agencies where you cater only to the travel agents' uh, requirement. I mean, the uh, the traveler's requirement related to entertainment, fun, and other activities. Second, you have the corporate travel agents who work between two countries because business travelers always have a fixed itinerary. They, they have a fixed travel plan. So that is, again, very important. And the third one is online. You have so many online travel agencies, probably in your country also. And the last one is specialized. For example, if you want uh, to have only wildlife tourism, you want to experience only adventure tourism, then we can have that kind of a travel agency. So in your syllabus, there was one topic, and that topic was uh, Sita. Sita is the, the name of a travel agency which was which is uh, 50 years old. So when you read about this uh, topic Sita, <clears throat> it's about your travel agency. It is renamed as Kyoni Travel Agency now. You can watch a video about Sita. So here again travel agencies involved in facilitation and accommodation, booking in airlines, related activities. So all that is the operations and assisting the traveler at the destination. So you can write about Sita and you can write about the operations of the travel agency. So travel agency will always uh, will be focused on foreign exchange earnings. They will look at their customer profile they may have some regional offices and branch offices. They will train and they will have a travel department. And this travel department will also be related with inbound travel. That means those coming to your country and outbound travel, people moving out of your country. So that is what is the role of a tour department. 
then uh, we have this uh, cargo custom clearances because people do a lot of shopping so we must have some kind of a marketing strategy for the travel agency we must attend great shows and we should be part of the travel agent association so sita is uh, one which had a tourism academy also they had a ticketing course also and there is a lot of competition because travel agents give huge discounts online travel agents give huge discounts there is international competition also and there can be some challenges for example in your country you are experiencing election and demonetization in india we have some other set of challenges so whenever i'm booking a trip for example if i'm you are a travel agent and i am chasing a itinerary from you for december now december we don't know what is going to be the situation of russia ukraine war what's going to be the situation in terms of the economic crisis of the world so i pay you in advance 80% of the money and then there are trip cancellations so it is between you as a travel agent and me as a passenger or a traveler the terms are negotiated so sita is one of the oldest travel agencies in the international market and it is a 50 year old travel agency so if you get a question on this topic you can easily write about the uh, various uh, you know specialized activities of the travel agencies and the importance of travel agency this topic you will also study in ts6 uh, once you will have classes for ts6 then i will also take up few topics of that particular subject then the next one is i had uh, shared those who have joined late i had shared about air india so the way you have your aviation industry similarly in india we have air india air india is one of the top most airlines in the world uh, it has recently given order for 200 boeing aircrafts this airlines is the oldest airlines of india uh, it was established in 1946 it operates on major train flying uh, sectors and it's known for its punctuality and it is known for its growth so it started in 1946 and 1948 it was uh, incorporated as air india international it has a chairman and then there are so many departments like operations engineering commercial stores department then these are the routes uh, they can uh, these are the places uh, traffic is important utilization of fleet and crew is important passengers preferences security all these are very very important for any airlines and then this airlines operates in north america europe southeast asia and is uh, involved in the tourism promotion activities they give huge discounts to travel agents they organize various trips along with the air aviation trips they have good uh, linkages with the hotel so all these are the aspects uh, related with air india so air india is in news in india right now because it's one of the profitable airlines of india so please watch your video on air india so that you get an idea what air india is all about and it's uh, the major airlines and it's going to be one of the of top 5 airlines in in the coming years because it's expanding in terms of its growth so aviation uh, okay suppose if i ask you that what are the important factors in the case of an airlines then for the airlines what is important is a good network on number of routes a high quality of aircraft trained crew members variety of food security for the passengers adherence to the time schedule as well as an international image so all these are important as far as airlines is concerned so we discussed about airlines and then the next topic that we had studied was about highway services and we watched a video of a highway 
uh, which I was sharing that here it, they have given the example of Haryana, but it is not possible for you to remember the name. So you can discuss uh, the the highway in your country. Now name one or two highways of your country. Any highway of your country which impressed you? Yes, please. So from Lagos, there is a highway. So you can get, discuss about different highways of your country. And uh, with this, the discussion comes to an end. Any observations from your side? Caesar, Konami, and Nora, anything from your side? So shall I end this no, class we... now? It's yeah, okay. we're still okay with it. Yes, we meet the next time. <laughs> next time for TS6. For your subject, yes. TS6, I will take the class. So we will meet at that time. All right. <laughs> Okay, so shall I end this class now? Hmm? Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much for participating. Thank you. 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 Pleasure. Pleasure. Thank you.